हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज लेक्चर 19 ऑन फिक्स पॉइंट थ्योरी एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द फिक्स पॉइंट सेट सो नाउ जस्ट सी इट इज यूजफुल टू नो that the fixed point set of a non expensive mapping is a non expensive retract of its domain now what do you mean by non expensive retract a non expensive retraction of a metric space md onto one of its subspace s is a non expensive mapping r of m onto s that is what if r is a mapping going from m to s which is non expansive such that it satisfied the distance of rx and ry where x and y are the members of m it is less than equal to d of xy means this r mapping is non expansive and if this r mapping leaves each point of the set s fixed means what the rx is equal to x for every x belonging to s then this set s is said to be the non expansive retract of m so once again see what do you mean by non expansive retraction we are given a matrix space we are given any subspace of this matrix right and now we are given a mapping which is going from m to s and this mapping is non expansive means it satisfying this condition right and if this mapping leaves each point of set s to be fixed means s uh, the map r of x is equal to x for every x member of s then we say that Uh, the this mapping r is a non expansive retraction and the set s is said to be non expansive retract of m right so uh, now we are seeing some uh, useful thing about the fixed point set of a non expansive mapping which is non expansive retract of the domain right and throughout this section we will denote ft as a set which set it is a fixed point set of the mapping t right so this ft denotes the fixed point set of a mapping t and now though this is a theorem this says that suppose m is a metric space which has the property that the fixed point set of every non expansive mapping of m into m is a non empty non expansive retract of m and this is assumption right that m metric space is satisfying this condition and suppose t and g they are commuting non expansive mappings of m into m then the set of fixed points of t intersection with the set of the fixed points of g is non empty so to prove this we consider any point of ft right means x is a fixed point of t then what will be the value of t of g and g of t since t and g they are commuting so therefore t of g uh, first of all it will be equal to g of t now what will be the value at x now just see when you open this g of t x is same as that g of t of x since uh, x is a fixed point of t so t of x is same as that x so we get this is g x so x is any fixed point of t right and g of t is g of x which is same as that t of g so what we have we have g is a mapping going from ft to ft so basically this g is a non expansive mapping from fixed point set of mapping t to fixed point set of mapping t so by our assumption there is a retraction non expansive retraction let it be r and which is also non empty so thus g of r is a mapping going from m to ft which is non expansive which is non empty fixed point set 
However, since R is a retraction on to FT, it is on to FT. So therefore, the fixed point set of the mapping G of R will be equal to the fixed point of mapping G intersection with fixed point of the mapping T. Right? We can easily prove this. We first consider the left hand side. Right? Let X be fixed point of the mapping G of R. If X is a fixed point of the mapping G of R, it means G of R at X is same as that X. Right? It means G of R of X is equal to X. Right? But R is a retraction. So R of X will be equal to X if X is a fixed point of T. Okay, so it means X is a member of FT. So whenever X is a member of FT, R of X is equal to X. So what we left, we left G of X is equal to X. So that means X is a fixed point of G also. Right? So whenever X is a fixed point of T using this retraction, X is a fixed point of G also. So if you take any fixed point from this mapping, it is also a subset of this. And similarly, the converse, if you take X to be the fixed point of this as well as X to be the fixed point of this, then this implies that this implies that g of x is equal to x where x is a fixed point of t since x is a fixed point of t therefore rx should be equal to x because it is a retraction right of m onto the non empty set ft okay so what we have we have g of x f g of x is equal to x why it is equal to x because x is a fixed point of g also since it belongs to the intersection right so this implies that g of r of at x is equal to x so hence x is also a fixed point of the mapping g of r it means this should be contained in this so from these two what we get these two are equal right so we can show easily that these two are same you first consider the left hand side and you will show it is a member of right hand side and then you take any member from the right and you will show it is a member of left so therefore these two are equal right since these two are equal and by our assumption uh, we get at least one point which is a fixed point is a member of this therefore this should be non-empty right and this thing we have to prove moreover moreover what we get that ft intersection fg is also a non-expensive retract of m because it is equal to g of r and this is non-expensive retract of M. Now, what do you mean by eventually non-expensive? A mapping T going from M to M is said to be eventually non-expensive if there exists an integer capital N such that after leaving finite the iterate nth iterate of t it is non-expensive means before n if you take t to the power n minus 1 that need not be non-expensive right so t to the power n is non-expensive and after this capital n every uh, mapping is non-expensive then this mapping t is said to be eventually non-expensive now based on this we have a theorem 
this says that suppose m is a metric space which has the property that the fixed point set of every non expansive mapping of m into m is a non expansive retract of m and suppose t is a mapping which is eventually non expansive then the fixed point set of the mapping t is non empty we have to show this thing so by the definition of eventually non expansive for if uh, we find some capital n sufficiently large then we can easily verify that t to the power n and t to the power n plus 1 they are commuting non expansive mapping of m into m you can easily show that t to the power n of tx will be same as that t to the power n plus 1 of x of tx so they are commuting right so they are commuting they are expense non expensive mappings so we can apply the previous theorem and by previous theorem the fixed point set of the mapping t to the power n as well as t to the power n plus 1 it should be non empty right so by previous theorem we have this should be non empty now it is sufficient to uh, show that that this intersection is same as that ft right then automatically we will get this is non empty because this is non empty so we need to prove this now just see they are equal why they are equal again you consider the left hand side uh, let x belongs to this ft means x is a fixed point of t right we need to show x is also a member of right hand side think okay since x is a fixed point of t so then clearly x is a fixed point of t square because what will be the value of t square x it will be t of t of x and t of x is x so two times when you apply t of t of x you will get it is x so uh, whenever x is a fixed point of t it is also a fixed point of every i traits of t so it is a fixed point of t square it is a fixed point of t cube and so on so it is also a fixed point of t to the power n and t to the power n plus 1 so it means it belongs to the intersection right so one side is obvious that ft is always contained in ft to the power n intersection f to the power t to the power n plus 1 now the reverse inequality uh, reverse inclusion so let's uh, let's suppose we consider any point from the right hand side that means uh, x belongs to x is a fixed point of t to the power n as well as t to the power n plus 1 right since x is a fixed point of t to the power n plus 1 it means t to the power n plus 1 at x is same as that x and we can open the t to the power n plus 1 as t to the power n and we can take t to be outside right but it is also a fixed point of t to the power n so t to the power n of x is also x so we get t of x is equal to x it means x is a fixed point of t so whenever x is a fixed point of both t to the power n and t to the power n plus 1 mapping it is also a fixed point of t so we get these two are same and since by the previous theorem this is non empty set therefore ft is also non empty and this thing we have to prove so of course the above results they are not really about the non expensive mapping because they are eventually non expensive so here it is eventually non expensive so they are not for Uh, non expensive mappings all one need to know is that there is a retraction from the domain of mapping onto its fixed point set which can be drawn from a class of mapping for which the original domain has the fixed point property so now the next is the definition of generic fixed point property a bounded closed convex subset k of a banach space is said to have generic fixed point property for non expensive mapping and in short it is called gfpp if every non expensive mapping f going from k to k has a fixed point set in 
every non empty bounded closed convex f invariant subset of k right so what is given to us we are given a banach space and we are given any bounded closed convex subset of k right then we are given a mapping f which is going from k to k which is non expansive and moreover every non expansive mapping which is going from k to k if this mapping has a fixed point set in every non empty bounded closed convex f invariant subset of k then this set is said to have generic fixed point property and based on this we have this result let's suppose k is a bounded closed convex subset of a separable banach space and suppose k has this generic fixed point property and let t be a mapping going from k to k which is non expansive then the fixed point set of t is a non empty it's non expansive retract of k and this is just by the previous theorem but here we will use the, the uh, separable so what do you mean by separable uh, banach space a metric space a topological space they are said to be separable if it possesses a countable dense subset means if it contains a countable dense subset right so this theorem can be proved with the help of the previous theorem 